white balance. Welcome to the Visual Center. I'm Carlos, and it's here we talk all about photography and visual art. Today, we're talking about white balance, and white balance has to do with light. Now, a lot of people take light for granted, but if you want to be a good photographer, understanding light needs to be your superpower. What the average person may not realize is that every light source has its own color temperature. Some give off warm tones, others give off cool tones. Take a look at this clip, and notice how the whites change colors as we move from in the sun to in the shade, then indoors, and then into an office. Now to you, light might just always seem like white light. And that's because your sophisticated brain, well, your brain is automatically compensating for that color temperature. A camera is simpler and doesn't compensate as well. So it needs the white balance settings to help make those corrections. Now the white balance settings were designed to compensate for very specific types of light sources and they can be found represented by these symbols. Now, where you find these symbols in your camera will depend on what model of camera you have. Some will have an external button and others will be found through the menu system. Now your camera does have an auto white balance, but this setting is not always accurate or reliable. This symbol is for incandescent or tungsten lighting, which is like your everyday average light bulb. Incandescent or tungsten lighting gives off a very orange or reddish hue. And so this camera setting will actually add blue tones or cool tones to your image in order to balance out the red tones from the tungsten light bulb. This symbol is for fluorescent lighting, which most often gives off a greenish hue. And so this setting will add magenta to your image to help balance that out. This symbol is used for daylight and daylight is a pure white light source. And so this setting will not add any colors to your image. This setting is used when you photograph in shady areas and the light source is a lot cooler than it is in direct sunlight. So this setting is gonna add warm tones to your image to help balance that out. The same thing will happen with this setting, which is for cloudy or overcast. Now when it's overcast outside, it's cooler color temperature, but not quite as cool as being in the shade. And so it's gonna add less warm tones to your image. This setting is used when you use flash with your camera, whether it's the pop-up flash on top of your camera or whether it's a studio strobe. Now a lot of modern flashes and strobes are actually daylight balanced now, and so you might end up choosing to use the daylight setting instead. The last setting is for a custom white balance, which can be represented by any of these symbols, depending on what model of camera you have. This setting creates a custom white balance specific to the lighting situation that you're in. Most often it's used with mixed lighting situations. Uh, let's say you have tungsten and fluorescent lighting, two very different color temperatures that are competing with each other. The custom setting allows you to create the perfect white balance for that situation. Some camera models will have an additional symbol like this one. This stands for Kelvin. And Kelvin is a unit of measure for color temperature. Sometimes you might actually know what color temperature your light source is, and you can actually dial in that exact number using this setting. Now how important this all really is, is determined by what format you're shooting in. If you shoot in the raw file format, this is actually less important because you can actually choose what the white balance is after you upload the picture to your computer. However, if you shoot in JPEG, you don't have that luxury and it can be a little bit more difficult when editing this and it adds more time to your editing process. Now you know what white balance is and you'll be able to use that to get accurate color in all your photographs. Another thing I wanted to mention is that you can use white balance creatively as well. You don't have to use it the way it was designed. You can use the wrong white balance to get a special effect to your image. So we wanna issue you a challenge. Take a photograph using the wrong white balance to add an interesting effect to your image. Go to our Facebook page and post your image in the comments to this video. As always, thanks for watching. And if you found this helpful, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And we'll see you in the next video. All right. All right. All right.